France up against Argentina at the Rugby World Cup. The games just keep getting better, man. You got Japan, Russia, Australia, Fiji, and then you're immediately into France and Argentina. This is a very, very important game uh, in Pool C, the Pool of Death. Uh, whoever loses this game faces a do or die game against England at some point in their pool. So this one is massive for both sides. Uh, to get through this pool, I would say without doubt the hardest pool in the um, in the comp, especially when you consider that the minnows in this pool aren't really genuine minnows like you know USA and uh, and Tonga will will push teams for periods as well. So there's no easy games in this pool. Uh, I, mean, I could look back in this video in a month and see somebody get an absolute hiding, but still, uh, France against Argentina, I'm, I'm picking it to be a pretty good game. Uh, as I said, very important that both, uh, that both sides put in a good performance. They've had a very close recent history. Just look at that record of three to France, uh, two to Argentina, so it's a fairly even split. The average score across those games is France 25, Argentina 17, so the French with a, a slight... Uh, advantage in the average points and a slight advantage in the average results. Um, they've both, well, three of those five games were played in, in France and they both won a game away. So two of the games played in Argentina, France won one of those. Three of the games played in France, Argentina won one of those. So it's not like they can only win at home. They've both traded results uh, home and away. And um, this one's neutral. So that one's not going to uh, make any difference in that the most recent result was 28 13 at the end of tour end of your tour in uh, in france uh and that was poor from argentina they were really bad so uh they will be looking to to step up from here and um yeah i guess just show us that they can do it at this level consistently uh because if you watch super rugby this year and largely this argentinian team is made up of guys who played in that uh final making super rugby team the Jaguares. Uh, there's some class operators in this outfit, so doing it at an international level is always that next step. We'll see how they go. Uh, the French always get that stereotype of being inconsistent um, on their day. You know, they can beat pretty much anyone, and um, we'll see how they go for this one, whether they can get a bit of a run going on. I'll put the lineups in the description so you guys can check them out. But in terms of the, the selections, Dupont and Tamak, uh, 9 and 10, Dupont is probably going to be the key guy you would think in this French campaign because he really runs the show. He is a proper class player, that guy. So um, if there's going to be one player to perhaps get them through some tough games, he might be that guy. And he and Tamak play at the same team, um, you know, at club level. So that, that chemistry should already be there. So he's preferred this as Tamak over, um, over Lopez, who was on the bench. Uh, midfield is uh, Vakatawa and Fiku, so that's a, a very dangerous looking midfield when you look at those guys. Uh, Medard, Peno, and Huje are the back three Peno. Um, despite the fact that he didn't he do some funny hand gestures in one of the most recent warm up games, was it the one against Scotland where he was being a bit of a twit? But that guy is, is, is lightning and uh, he's very dangerous, like able to bust a tackle. So uh, yeah, you're going to have to look out for, for that guy as well. Medad, uh, a bit of a veteran, reliable guy at the back. Fords, uh, Poro Girado, who's captain is Slamani in the front row. Ituria, interestingly, has to go into the second row. They always said that he was going to be the kind of the, the utility guy, while Gabriag is uh, suspended for the, the first game. Uh, so Ituria is there in the second row alongside Vaha Vaha. Amina, I always get these better before I do the videos. Um, but yeah, that's a pretty decent looking second row. So it means you've got uh, LaRue there as your, your lock cover. And um, Lore, Olivier, and Aldrit make out the back row. So I look at the Argentinian back row and I think I like that one a bit better. But if you look at the front row, I think I like the French one better. So uh, we'll see which one gets the advantage on the day. Other guys on the bench for France, Picamoles, uh, Bamba, uh, Machino, Lopez, Ramos. So you guys can check the team out and let me know who else we should be looking out for. Argentina, um, it's the front row, which I feel like is going to have to hold up if they're going to have a chance of winning. I mean, they're always going to have a chance of winning, but it's been their one Achilles heel, and it's such a vital one in, in, in rugby. You know, you can't 
really win off the back of a of a, a scrum which is going backwards. So uh, Tetis, Chaparro, Crevy, and Figalo are the front row. Figalo is kind of a veteran there alongside Crevy. But, I mean, none of these guys are, are real newbies. Uh, Petty and Lavanini in the second row is a top, top class second row. Petty is another guy who's got just an absolute silky skill set. Um, look for him to, to be stealing line out ball, to be setting up plays and, um, you know, trying to get into space from time to time. Uh, Matera, Crema and Ortega Desio are the back three. Matera is captain and he has been clearly one of the best players uh, at least in Super Rugby all year, and he was continuing in, in form for uh, the Pumas in the, the Rugby Championship. The guy is just having the year of his life. I can't understate how good he has been uh, this year. Absolutely world class. Uh, Crema also can cover the second row as well, so he's a bit of a big, bulky guy. Um, will cause problems. The backs, Cobelli and Sanchez. Sanchez, since he's been playing his rugby in France, perhaps a, perhaps a little bit out of step with his uh, old Jaguares teammates uh, for the Pumas. It didn't quite click for them. Um, so we'll see how well they've uh, gelled in together since they've been together in camp for, for the Rugby World Cup. Hopefully well, because the guy on his day uh, is also a world-class player. De La Fuente, one of my favorite midfielders, very consistent alongside Orlando in the midfield. Uh, Moroni and Mojano on the wings. Uh, Boffelli uh, is, again, absolute class at fullback, relatively young as well. So, um, yeah, it's it's a pretty looking, a pretty good looking Argentinian team, but also a very good looking French team. So, I'm very torn on how I think this one is going to go. In Super Brew, I will make my prediction, but I will keep that under my hat until... Uh, the result is in. Um, the bookies and rugby forecast, which is the algorithm, both have this one going France's way by one point. So they're picking this one to be very, very close. Not much going for for either side in terms of an advantage. Um, admittedly, I did like look through the history, and Argentina at World Cup time uh, seemed to have the edge over of uh, France with the two most recent World Cup meetings going Argentina's way. I think they were at the same World Cup where they met twice and uh, they have won once at World Cup, uh, have the French over the Argentinians, but of three, it's Argentina two to one. So um, yeah, man, this one should be awesome. Uh, you guys let me know your thoughts on this game. Have a look at the, the players in the description. Who do you think is going to be kind of the key guy? Uh, for either team other than the guys I've mentioned or including the guys I've mentioned and um yeah I'll talk to you guys again soon see you later